The Spin-Off Podcast Network. Ready to rediscover the joys of cycling? With over 300 kilometres of cycle paths across Tamaki Makoto, jumping on your bike and going for a ride is such a fun way to discover the city from a different perspective. Cycling is getting more and more popular across Auckland, so now's a great time to join the hype and give cycling a go. Head to at.govt forward slash cycling to find your nearest cycleway today. The Fold is brought to you by O Media, making brands unmissable and public spaces better across Aotearoa. No mai hoki mai kia the fold imihine ko Duncan Grey tokungwa. Uh, this is a monopod, and you already know what it's about. Um, this is a a devastating day for uh, media in New Zealand. Um, you know, I've been in this business for uh, twenty five years and um, covering it in earnest for at least ten. Um, and I don't think there has been as, as big or consequential a moment as this in all that time. Uh, what we've seen today is an email went out at around 11, uh, as I understand it, it was something close to an all-staff meeting um, of, of various teams at... Warner Brothers Discovery, uh, which is home to three as its, its most famous brand, um, informing them that the channel as we know it will cease to exist. The brand will, will endure uh, for the time being. There will still be a three, but what they're proposing is the end of any programming uh is my understanding, any programming that is not funded by New Zealand On Air. So most obviously, prominently and, and heartbreakingly, that is the whole News Hub brand, the 6pm news uh, presented by Mike McRoberts and Samantha Hayes most nights, uh, the AM show, the, the, the Late Bulletin, all of the digital work that had become its own kind of identity, own quite feisty brand there as well. The press gallery, which had had that extraordinary lineage from you know, Duncan Garner to Paddy Gower to Tover O'Brien to, to Jenna Lynch uh, lately. That that goes, that last part I think is actually really crucial. If you think about the tonal difference between the way that politics is covered and delivered on TVNZ versus on on three on News Hub, you get a real sense of the, you know, what it feels like when the government owns your station versus uh, the private sector does. That's by no means the whole of the impact, and it is a very sort of, on some level, a relatively narrow part of it. But it's also there are huge democratic uh, consequences here. I've I've written about this in a piece on on the spinoff.co.nz, which should be up shortly, but. If you think about the the big television, t- TV news remains, uh, while it's on, the single biggest news event of the day for the largest chunk of the population. Now, people can argue about, you know, on an average day, more than a million people read stuff in the Herald. Um, that, that, that's a real argument. But at 6 p.m., what leads the 6 p.m. news is the thing that most politicians care the most about. And at 6 p.m., you know, we have, if you add up the audiences of uh, TVNZ, TV th- uh, TVNZ3, Fakata Māori, and, and you think about that as a, as a group of people, it's probably somewhere close to or even above 20% of the population watching the news at that time. Right... Once we're on the other side of this proposal, it is just a proposal, but it will go through. Uh, don't, don't doubt that. We will be, there will be only government owned uh, news broadcasts on television in New Zealand. And you just have to let that sink in. There will be only government owned news broadcasts on television in New Zealand. 
TVNZ does a fantastic job with the 6 p.m. news. The Katamari has built out a really impressive news operation over the last 15 years. But fundamentally, there is something extremely disquieting to me, and I'm sure it will be to you too, about the idea that of, of this government, any government, having that much influence over the biggest news product, um, you know, in terms of day part in the country. Um, that's, that's just one element of, of this story. It would not completely shock me if, if something happens there. I don't think it's likely. But because of the democratic impl implications, it's not implausible. News Hub was one of the big newsrooms in the country. There are, you know, you can count them on, on the fingers of, of one hand, essentially. You have RNZ, you have TVNZ, you have NZME, you have stuff. You had News Hub. We now have one fewer, um, and you know that that's that's a big problem. Um, you know, in terms of like big mass audience news products, there is one less of those once this goes through. Um, the the fundamental democratic checks and balances. Th these 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 require a plurality of different newsrooms. Uh, you know, to, to my mind, that that's that's pretty essential now. So, so there's there's obviously a huge news element to to this story. The fact that uh, we have one less newsroom, we have, and and it's not just any newsroom. I you know not not they they all have their own distinct character and their own stars and audiences. But News Hub was I th I've always felt this one of the most impressive newsrooms in the country because it was smaller, because it didn't have the sort of stability of workforce that um, some, uh, some other newsrooms have had over the years, yet it still had this amazing character to it, the sense that it, it was unafraid. Not that, uh, and again, I'm not trying to kind of diminish other newsrooms' work here or say that they were afraid, but it, it had this particular kind of chip on its shoulder quality. It had this specific way of framing the news that had a real energy to it, a real edge to it. And and I think that you wouldn't want that to be the whole of your country's news offering, but you wouldn't want it to not be in your country's news offer either. It, it For a certain group of people, for certain story beats, it was really, really important, really vital that it had. And I don't think it's any accident that when you look over at TVNZ now, who's their chief correspondent? It's John Campbell, who came up, uh, you know, made his bones at, at TV3. You know, who is their sort of big 7 p.m. journalist? Hilary Barry, longtime newsreader on on uh, on TV3. You know, who who put the the debates together for for TVNZ during the last debates? Carol Hirschfeld, the you know the longtime newsreader, and, and ultimately. Sort of EP of of and and sort of you know behind the camera uh, driver of Campbell Live when that was one of the main current affairs shows. There aren't a lot of former TVNZ journalists in those kind of roles at, at three, and I think it says something about the news culture at that organisation that it built, that it built this infrastructure, it birthed these generations of stars who aren't necessarily all still there, but they all have gone on to be big somebodies within this business. And even if you look at what does remain, you know, Paddy Gower, uh, Samantha Hayes, Mike McRoberts, Ryan Bridge, these are all bold-faced stop traffic names to, to, to New Zealanders, and they have come out of, of that culture. So it is, it's, just, it's just a massive, massive loss. Um, and, and I, you know, we as a country just need to kind of sit with that. It has obvious implications um, beyond news. Uh, let's think about uh, the, the sort of the other programming that, that was bundled with news. News, people don't do news because, well, journalists do news because they feel like they can't do anything else. TV stations do news because it's a great way to kickstart their evening ratings. Um, you know, that there was 90 minutes of it. You know, in, in November last year, 90 minutes of news and current affairs started the evening. That's gone. That would often flow into some form of local programming. That might have been New Zealand on air funded, or it might have been 
a show like The Block or, or you know, Latterly House Rules, you know, three or four nights a week of local content. You know, a lot of, a lot of you listening might not have loved it, but it was certainly a part of the culture of this country. It, it birthed stars, moments. It was part of the monoculture that knitted us together. New Zealand businesses would sponsor. Increasingly, it felt like every moment of a show like The Block, and it was part of how they sort of sold their, their work. All of this goes, you know, the, the, the press release that went out um, talked about the only programming, the only local programming that sits there will, will, will be essentially funded by New Zealand funding agencies. It won't be funded by commercial means. The, the, the risk, the cost of making a show like The Block or, or Married at First Sight, which was commissioned lately, you just can't, can't sustain it here, especially not without the, the really strong lead in. Because even, you know, recently, I, I checked the ratings before I came on, News Hub was doing over 200,000, uh, you know, it, it was still rating very highly. That's got to just go away radically with whatever they, they put in there. So three, all of the local programming, all of the integrations, all of the commercial programming, you know, all of that that world, you know, the, it, it it either goes away or it becomes so hard that I wonder if it can still exist. So you think about all of the comedy sh- programming, the sh- shows like Seven Days or New Zealand Today, uh, which have for so long been a big part of, you know, Three's brand, what it presents itself as. Most of those were wholly or partly funded by New Zealand On Air, but can you continue to fund them when there is no news, when there's none of the other infrastructure around it. You might for a year or two, maybe, but but three really becomes functionally not that different from brands like Choice or, you know, those that sort of soup of Sky channels where you're like, I, I think they show reruns of something and maybe they've got, you know, like you just don't really know what they are. They're not really a big part of, of the culture of, of this country. Um, so... You know, it's it's just a it's a, it's a it's a it's a big blow beyond news. A lot of the early reporting I've seen has emphasised that, rightly so. But it, it goes a lot further than that too. The the other thing, and I know this is what I've, I've sort of gleaned this from talking to people in the media and advertising um, world, is that what we see with with television ratings with linear is that. Even as the audiences for television have come back radically over the last, you know, ten or fifteen years since the arrival of streaming and uh, UGC uh, platforms like like YouTube and so on, they're still because you can basically put an ad on and you can put it on TVNZ and TV3 at the same time. You're going to sell pizzas. You're going to sell paint. You you know like. It, it 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 just has if in terms of going to just crash into a mass audience, it it has this special power. Even as it's been humbled, it remains the the best tool they have. The thing that's sort of different now, you know, is that while three will still exist, if you you punch that number in on your remote, you'll still go there because you you don't have those, those big sort of tentpole local shows you've got to think that that ratings are going to come back you know i would hazard a guess at 50 percent from where they are now it's a pure finger in the air but what it does is that that sort of and and yes some of the people who were watching three will go to tvnz so there is a short-term benefit to them but the overall pie gets smaller some proportion of those who don't go to tvnz will go to other digital channels and when they do that they overwhelmingly move from a largely local environment to a largely anywhere international internet environment. And our purchase on culture, our, our general, you know, the, 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 the whole kind of matrix of advertising and programming and news and so on, which exists in New Zealand and helps give us our own national identity as distinct from the the sort of big, you know, international kind of everything culture that, that we live through. That just the the, the already tenuous kind of uh, underpinnings of that just get um, get harder, significantly harder as a result. 
you know, what else is there to say? Obviously, it's a, it's a huge day for news. There, there are um, dozens of journalists who are going out who are, will be desperately trying to find jobs now. There aren't many places hiring at the moment. It's a really, really tough market. It's a tough market because advertisers are making decisions. They are make, and and you know, including the government, um, you know, which is a huge part of the advertising market. They are deciding that they will spend money on YouTube, on Instagram, on TikTok. They and not on on local platforms. Local platforms still have big audiences, um, but they that that sort of that motion is just really set in stone. And you know, and you know, so so for all of us who operate New Zealand um, sort of professionalized, you know, media and entertainment platforms, it's not a good day for us. It's not like we look out there and go, oh, you know, there's there's one less market participant and we can, you know, we're, we're, there's, there'll be a bit more to go around. All of us are just looking like, okay, well, I wonder who's next. And that's just a really, really unpleasant thought, but you, you can't pretend that it's not, um, it's not something that, you know, that, that, that's much more likely the thought than the, well, maybe there'll be a little bit of a reprieve um, for for those platforms. What it does do is really heat pressure on the government. Like I said, it now um, is is going to be looking at an environment where it is the ultimate owner of of all of the the new the, the sort of broadcast um, newsrooms, scale broadcast newsrooms in the country, with the exception of NZME. Um, it's got this bill before Parliament, Fair Digital News Bargaining Bill, which it has grudgingly uh, supported a select committee, but but hinted that it won't go any further. You know that were it to collapse, there's probably at least one more, um, maybe more big big newsroom goes as a result. It's that that's something that it has to grapple with. There, there is a lot of hostility towards the media and in various parts of this coalition government. But you know, can you imagine a day when you walk out onto the tiles at at, um, at Parliament and it's only government owned, uh, you know, it's only journalists from government owned newsrooms there, or the vast bulk of them are there. That's not in the likely to be the case in the immediate future, but it just got a lot more likely. Um, today, it's it's a this is a massive deal. It's a massive deal. Yeah. So look, it's it's. But my heart really goes out to to all of those who have um, have got this news today. Who work at uh, various aspects of Warner Brothers Discovery. Uh, Glenn Kine, the um, who, who leads the business in this part of the world, sent me an email before I came on, uh, in which he stressed that it wasn't the fault of those. People and I believe him. I think it's just you see it in the ratings, but you just see it in the product. The product still has that that bounce to it that uh, that it's always had. Um, and you know, this is just fundamentally the 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 reality of the market that we operate in. It's a really sad day for for all those people, for, for us as audiences, but particularly for those who worked their asses off to to make that product. And for any of those people, my my, my sort of thoughts and, and heart goes out to them uh, so obviously I will continue to to report on this and, and potentially uh, bring another pop-up um, for later in the week uh, and, and we'll continue to cover it on, on the website uh, this month, Co. And Z. thank you so much for listening thank you to Tia here for jumping on to record this and yeah just a really really sad day for New Zealand's media
That was The Fold, brought to you by our partners at O-Media, making brands unmissable and public spaces better across Aotearoa. Huge thanks to O-Media for sponsoring this episode of The Fold and enabling us to make unmissable connections with Kiwis. K-pop to me means more than just listening to music. It's learning to be myself. The spin-off's new documentary, k p o l i s follows three Pacific youth obsessed with K-pop. In a one-off documentary, see what they've found in Korean pop culture and how they bridge it with their own. When you start dressing, looking different, everyone side-eyes you. But in K-pop, they're just like, no, like celebrate yourself. Watch k p o l i s today at thespinoff.co.nz slash videos. Made with the support of New Zealand On Air. The Spin-Off Podcast Network.